Welcome to another week of our journey of exploring uh, when the church gets it right. Remembering our definition of the church, our working definition of the church for this series is that the church is a human endeavor of trying to organize and ordain the followers of Jesus. And whether or not the church gets it right is whether or not it is aligned with agape love as revealed in the life of Jesus. So we've dealt with four characteristics of the church when it gets it right. First of all, being sent. Secondly, being bold. Thirdly, being partners. Fourth, being diverse. And this week we're looking at a characteristic that could best be expressed with the word shalom. S-H-A-L-O-M. Shalom. Now let's begin by taking a close look at this Hebrew and Aramaic word that is simply and generally translated peace. And peace is generally defined as the absence of conflict. Both inward peace, the absence of a internal stress and conflict and outward peace in relationship with others relationships without conflict and war however when we dig deeper and consider the meaning of this word in the biblical witness we discover more than just the absence of conflict I had the occasion to be invited to preach in the Jewish synagogue one Friday evening, and I wanted to, in part, deal with the commonality between the Jewish and Christian faith journeys, although distinctly different. We had many things in common. Having had a couple of years of studying Hebrew behind me, I wanted to be certain I understood the working definition of shalom, the greeting of one person to the other. This rabbi's response was that shalom was more than a greeting between two persons wishing for life without conflict. He shared that shalom was a greeting that life will be whole. He said his understanding of shalom was a prayerful greeting and blessing that in the life of the other, brokenness will be restored. Healing will be experienced. Wholeness will be experienced. And this understanding that was offered to me by a rabbi, blended with the effort of many in our United Methodist community to affirm and support Peace with justice. This was an understanding that that peace, the absence of conflict, is not enough. Because there can be an absence of conflict without things being right. And that has to do with justice. There can be peace, the absence of conflict, with brokenness never being addressed. I've experienced that in our social life together. Often the majority will herald peace, even though things aren't right and brokenness is not addressed, it's heralded because there's no outward conflict. At the same time, minorities do not experience that peace, for from their perspective, things are not right. Brokenness is not addressed, and wholeness is not restored. You see, the church gets it right when its life is one of shalom, peace with justice, a commitment to heal brokenness, that life will be whole, both internally and in relationship with others. 
Last month we celebrated the Christmas season and celebrated uh, the the words uh, that came to the community <clears throat> uh, upon the birth of Jesus. Peace on earth. But there was more. Good will among all. We often overlook this added phrase, good will among all. This is the justice that must go along with peace. This is shalom that packages together peace with justice, peace on earth, and good will among all. One of the congregations uh, to which my response was awe and wonder was marked by shalom, peace with justice. They were on the lookout for brokenness. Minorities who were neglected and not included were sought out. They were listened to and wholeness of common humanity among all was sought. They contacted the county sheriff to see if members could visit with persons in jail for no other reason than to establish a relationship with incarcerated persons, period. Um, they, when a divorce happened, when a divorce happened in their community of faith or to a family known to them, they had each family member were assigned a person to contact them and walk the journey with them with no agenda, with no advice, simply to walk the journey with them. They assigned members to attend meetings of the school board and the city council to be on the lookout of indications of brokenness of human lives, where agape rather than judgmental love might make a difference. You see, churches characterized by shalom or like a, a forest ranger on a lookout tower in the forest, the first to spot a forest fire and respond. Shalom churches are on the lookout for brokenness in community to respond with agape love. You see, one of the characteristics of churches who get it right are those that are on the lookout, who've got the perspective of a lookout tower, looking for brokenness in human lives and in human community, and choose to respond with the gift of agape love. You see, this is what Jesus was all about. Jesus was always on the lookout for broken lives. That is what shalom, peace with justice, congregations are all about. Indeed, shalom, my friends, shalom. And in the words of the hymn writer, can it be said better than this? There's a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Brokenness must be addressed in individual lives and in the life of the community. And churches who get it right are on the lookout and respond to that brokenness that the balm in Gilead might make the wounded Whole. That's simply my observation of churches who get it right. And for your thought and our conversation, 
What are your experiences of peace without justice in the life of a congregation? What are your experiences of shalom, peace with justice in the life of a congregation? And what are your experiences of local congregations or denominations being lookout towers for brokenness in the human community. Thank you for being a part of our journey.